So I think there is a really interesting question now for brands as a whole with what's going on with technology as to how they are relevant. And if you want to be relevant, you've got to be in the moment and you've got to know how to use those moments to suit what you do and be authentic. And then, of course, you know, with the world of the social web and data, I mean, everything is at your disposal to really start, you know, amplifying things. But the, the, the fundamental question, I think, is can, you know, can brands create authentic culture? And, and can they transcend beyond the products and services they sell to actually providing something very different and in doing so attract a new loyal audience? I believe that going forwards, um, first of all, and um, before anything else, brands have a responsibility to create an influence culture in a positive way, by which I mean we need to move from a historical focus on making good advertising to making advertising good. So um, the, the examples that leap to mind immediately, obviously, are for too long our industry has created false aspirational models. And it hasn't necessarily done that intentionally. Um, it's, it's happened over decades. But first and foremost, I would love to see brands considering the world in which we would all like to live, um, a world in which brands are able to do good and make money simultaneously, and I would love to see them perpetuating really positive sociocultural dynamics. And what I mean by that uh, is the future should not be about stereotypes, the future should be about real. We should celebrate real people, real life, um, real issues, and, 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 and I should point out, um, I don't mean that brands should instantly tackle, you know, deeply um, serious fundamental um, scenarios, but I do believe that brands can influence those positively in the right kind of way within, within their particular roles within everyday life. I think um, it's usually by accident, and I think it normally comes from a place of passion that, that you, that the, you know, the brand team and the people within a business, all of the people within a business, passionately getting behind a campaign really feels like it's something to do with you know, an authenticity that are coming from those people and what they're trying to do to change the world. Um, you know, my favourite example is uh, Dove, obviously, fantastic one, but you know, you really get a sense that everybody understands what that's trying to do. And we can all subscribe to it. Everyone, there's no one can argue against the campaign for real beauty. So, um, whereas our attempts to ban cooking, a little bit more controversial, but you know, I think we can all agree that was a worthwhile aim. Uh, I think one of the most interesting areas for brands to get involved in the creation of culture is probably around social good and social purpose. You know, to date, a lot of big organisations and a lot of brands have got a CSR department um, that will do, you know, initiatives of various kinds to put back into society. Increasingly, it's very, very hard for brands to get their whole point across just through bought media and through traditional channels. They've got to do things that will spread in people's networks. One of the best ways of doing that is to do something of value or of purpose, something that genuinely helps. Because people will spread that message because it reflects well on them, because they can, they can be identified with that positive message, um, but also because it's of value to them and their community. Um, that's the easiest way, I think, for brands to do something that people will talk about. Obviously, it's still open and available to all of us to be entertaining, to be interesting. It's quite difficult sometimes for brands to do that and compete with Breaking Bad or the latest comedy that's, that's appearing on TV. So within the space of social purpose and, uh, if you like, enlightened self-interest, there's massive opportunity for brands to create content that people will share and will talk, will talk about quite happily. I think that culture now is sort of starting more on a smaller local level um, and um, the, the, the feel is much more for local markets, farmers' markets, um, and I think if the big brands can, um, if, if they want to sort of get involved um, really on a, on a more immediate level, it's about getting more personal and sort of integrating on a, on a um, yeah, on, on a more of a kind of community level. So going, weirdly going smaller in order to go bigger, if that makes any sense. I'd like to see them sponsoring um, um, community buildings such as youth centres, um, uh, drama centres, um, you know, um, the, the money that they have 
sloshing around um, could be invested, I think, at a much more of a grassroots level. I don't think brands can create culture. I think brands can nurture environments where cultures can grow. I think they can do that by being more human. They've kind of forgotten that if you are super passionate about what you're doing and what you're doing is authentic, then you will attract very human individuals that you don't need to teach how to be human because they're naturally that way. It's like trying to create culture is like trying to create happiness. So how do you make happiness? You have to create the environment for happiness to flourish. I don't think big brands understand much in this new hyper-connected, very networked, real-time, all-the-time world that we live in right now. And they're following a lot of old methodology. I think that if they lived a little bit more with networked devices, with looking at how the networked cons consumer and the, the connected individual lives, they might see that, hang on a second, we're not just this isn't going to work just trying to fool people into doing this because we've told them we're amazing. They actually want to see, feel, taste and be told amazing now. As an industry, we have handed our power over to the tech industry. We've handed the power of our own creativity over to people like Facebook and Google and Twitter and Tinder and Instagram. And those ventures are demonstrating back to us how they can engage with consumers with really interesting forms of content in a way that our industry has been failing to. And so I would love to see brands creating culture, creating wonderful forms of entertainment and engagement that make people feel that brands are an enhancement to their lives, not a detraction from it. I think, how do brands have connection with the public? I think that's changing. I mean, the public have stormed the barricades. There's not, you know, a few years ago, everyone in marketing, we started doing social, you know, what, three or four years ago, it was only that, that recent that we started doing social media, advertise, uh, content creation within our marketing departments. And what we learned really quick was that marketing departments should not be running the Twitter feed on their own. That suddenly there was loads of people asking us consumer questions, like where's my delivery for us or wherever it might be. Um, so us trying to have witty banter about a new Batman film is one thing, but actually they'll talk back. So I think really you have to look at what they're talking to you about and listen and respond to it in an authentic way rather than trying to manipulate people into, into what you want to say. We need to listen to our customers, to genuinely listen to what they're actually saying and work with that rather than keep telling, telling, telling them what we want them to do. What, what will happen is people will create, um, you're creating then a kind of emotional response, aren't you, to a brand? because um, people are, are going, oh, look, this has been given to us. We then, therefore, we will invest in it. Um, and the chances are, I suppose, if they invest in it emotionally, they then also might invest in it financially, which is, of course, the bottom line of why they would do it. Looking at how the brand I've created, right, has used culture as probably its strongest weapon. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, for the marketplace we operate in, what differentiates the, the, the bigger, smart agencies that are scale that can do the work we do um, at, the, at the scale that we do it is culture. And culture is not something you buy in a day. You have to mould it, create it, work at it, nourish and nurture it in equal measure over a long period of time. And it's amazing the things that take root, uh, sometimes the things that you don't expect, uh, and the dividends they pay you back in, in terms of how it, it becomes the most dominant part of organising something and making sense of, uh, of what you do and what you stand for. Uh, recently, we bought an agency in Africa, and Unilever, I know, in that market, are very much attempting to create culture by uh, providing services that are desperately needed in, in, in new and different ways, right? Uh, they're extending parts of their philosophy around the environment and generosity to embrace... What, what people need using technology smartly. So there are, you know, there are examples out there, many examples of where brands are experimenting with this. I mean, Red Bull, of course, is one of the most cited examples of all time. Uh, but I think a brand's got to be clear when you're doing this about that, that it's not a one-off. I think that, I come back to what I said right at the beginning. 
to do this take culture takes years, decades, in some cases centuries, right? And and so that people have to be prepared to run the long distance, I guess, and not, not just try and do a bit of content and then run away and hope it will work. They've got to sustain that.